Folks, we got a blight traveling across this valley and it has to do with foreclosures of homes. And we got Dennis Swartzel. Dennis, it's good to have you with us. Thanks, Lynn. He's, if you got any problems in your yard and you want to get rid of them, Dennis Swartzel at Horticulture Consultants is a guy that can do it for you. But here, Dennis, we got a home that's been in foreclosure now for how long and then maybe go into a little bit what's going on here. Well, it's been about two months, but the water's been on for a while and just recently it got turned off. So now we're looking at a lot of dead plant material. Now, did the family turn it off or did the bank or whoever? I'm not quite sure how it, it came to pass, but it, it did get turned off and it's been off for about two weeks now. Uh -huh. And what, what's interesting about it, folks, is we'd start to look across Here's an apricot tree right here. Uh, oh, it's a peach tree. Yeah, it was looking pretty good. I, obviously, it was stressed just because it wasn't being maintained to the same level that it was accustomed to. But the plum tree and the peach, as you said, they've both uh, declined. We've got shrubs in the back that have all died. Now, the, the one, that, the lower one on the right there, that's uh, a mock orange, I believe? Correct, and the one on the left is a myrtle. It's still hanging in there. And, and that's interesting that uh, a myrtle's sitting right next to a mock orange. And why, the, why one over the other? Well, the myrtle is just a little more vibrant, I think. Comes from the Mediterranean, so they're kind of used to prolonged drought. And I think that might be the big difference. And then you go, then you take this uh, mock orange. They got very big leaves. Uh, big, bigger the leaves, the more problems you're going to have with drought. Boy, it's kind of it's kind of like being at a morgue or a. a, a a graveyard right yeah, here today. This, this is very sad when you see this kind of tree canopy that is lost. You know, it takes years to develop plants like this and then they're gone in a couple of three weeks. Well, what could, what could the people of this valley do that might not be available? Well, I think we need to talk to our commissioners, our, our city council, and see if we can develop some sort of ordinance that would require the banks, the foreclosure people, to make sure that the irrigation stays on the power's there for the irrigation controllers, and we protect and, and preserve the tree canopy. We don't want to lose these plants that have been in for 12, 15, 20 years. It's just a shame. Mm -hmm. and, it, and, it, and then they have to, re when the people, new people move in, they got to restart all over, and it's just sad. But we got a, a Modesto ash, I believe, here, one of the ashes here. This is a raywood ash, and it's still hanging in there. It's an amazing fact that it's still alive but it won't take but just a few more weeks of uh, this kind of weather that's going to take it out. Well, Dennis, as we look across the, these gravestones right here, mm. <laughs> it's just sad. Just two months ago, they were very Uranus, vibrant plants. Privet over here. Mm. So a few plants are going to hang in there and survive, but it's, it's the big trees that we're really worried about. Mm. And the neighbors should drag hoses over and put them on there and, oh, and just let idea. it trickle. You know, while, uh, it's not going to happen overnight to get the changes that we need with the ordinance and that sort of thing. So we need to all come forward, put our hoses out there, and try to help our neighbors. Mm -hmm. Folks, what we're going to do is look into this a little bit, and then we're going to come back and tell you things that you could do to help us maybe stop this blight in our valley. Now back to you in the studio.